Welcome back once more to the broadcast. This is KTN Prime here on KTN News. Now, the Orange Democratic Movement, ODM, has written to the Speaker of the Senate, Ken Lusaka, uh, asking to remove uh, Ledama Olikina, the, Senate, the Senator for Narok, from the County Public Accounts and Investments Committee, as well as the Senate Business Committee, just days after Olekina was elected. We have him in studio tonight to just talk about what's happening with him uh, with his party and in the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Senator, for joining us tonight. Um, now, with me, I have, um, I have, I have a, a list of how voting went by uh, for the NASA members when they were proposing the names that were to be uh, proposed for election as chairman of the County Public Accounts and Investments Committee. A total of 29 members were present. Uh, three of them obtained. Two of them were not eligible to vote. Uh, but you got 14 votes. Uh, the Senator for Migorio Chilayako got 14 votes. The Senator for Taita Taveta, uh, Jonas Maruma, got 12 votes. Uh, Senator for Kisi, Sam Ongeri, got 11 votes. And then Mohamed Faki of Mombasa, 10, as well as Boniface Kabaka of Machakos, 10. Clearly, you had the upper hand in this vote by the NASA coalition. What does it mean to you that your party, the ODM party, prefers the Kisi senator to you for this all-important position? First of all, Ben, even before I, I get into this issue, there is a story that you ran about evictions in Kariobangi. And I just want to appeal to the government to really think about those Kenyans because those Kenyans are suffering. And it is sad that some of us will drive back to our homes while those Kenyans are sleeping out in the cold. It is something very sad. Now, to your question, uh, ordinarily, the whip of any party would select uh, um, members to represent the coalition or rather any, any, either the majority or the minority side in any committee. When I joined um, the Senate two years ago, I was selected by the whip to be able to represent the party in several committees. One, the House Business Committee. The second one is the Public Accounts and Investment Committee. All right. We did a tremendous good job uh, for about two years, or maybe, th uh, let's say, two and a half years. Now, when it came to now selecting new members who will be able to represent the coalition, it was very difficult because, as you saw in that list, about 10 individuals or senators expressed an interest to be part of this committee. The minority leader, the minority whip, and the deputy whip were unable to convince us on who would form that part of um, the membership. So it was subjected into a vote. On April 20th, the entire NASA coalition senators voted for the members to represent the coalition in this committee. All right. This is when my colleagues, who I thank very much, gave me 14 votes, Senator Chilayako 14 votes, and the other two senators, Senator Ongeri and Senator Mwaruma, uh, 11 and 10 votes. At that point, I believe that the minority leader, who now use a draconian uh, provision in the standing orders, lost uh, his opportunity to be able to have the powers to appoint and de-whip a member because this was a position where we were voted for. So when we were voted for, we joined the other colle our colleagues from the Jubilee Party. The Jubilee Party being the majority party have five members. For you to become a chairperson, you have to be elected by both the Jubilee and the NASA members. Because when you are in the Senate committees, you do not have a NASA committee or a Jubilee committee. In fact, when, we, when I joined Parliament, Senator Kajuang was actually nominated by the, he was proposed to be chair by the Jubilee Party. And then at the same, same time, Senator Ongeri wanted to become a, uh, the chairperson. But then he ended up getting, I think, two votes, and Senator Kajuang got seven votes. But isn't it, isn't it a common tradition that uh, the chair of the CPEC goes to the minority party? Or yes. The coalition of parties? Yes. Yes, indeed, that is correct. But the minority, co the, minor the minority side of the House was made up of four members, which any of those members are all equal. Any of them can become uh, the chairperson. All right. And I remember 
Senator uh, Orengo invited us to his office on the 1st of May. We went to his office in town, uh, the four of us, and three of us expressed an interest to become chairpersons of the, Senate, uh, of the Public Accounts and Investment Committee. Right. That was myself, Senator Ongeri, and also Senator Ochilo Ayako. We spent about two and a half hours. We did not agree on who was going to become the chairperson or who was going to be nominated by a coalition to be voted for to become the chairperson. Then the next day, we held a three-hour meeting on Zoom, which I hosted All right. from 8 p.m. to around 11 p.m. We again did not agree. And then on Sunday, Sunday we were supposed to have a meeting with Orengo again so that we can be able to settle on one person. That meeting did not materialize. In fact, what happened, Senator Chila Ayako went and met with Orengo and the party leader to agree on who was going to be party. I was never consulted. I was never called to be asked whether uh, uh, either to step down. And then on Monday, when the elections were to be held, when I walked into the election room, or rather the uh, county, county hall where we were having the elections, right. I knew that we had three members who were interested in becoming chairpersons. Okay. So I campaigned. All right. My colleagues campaigned. And the results of that election was that I got five votes and Senator Ongeri got four votes. This is when hell broke loose. Immediately when I left the election room, when I had already been declared the chairperson, which, in fact, Senator Ongeri congratulated me. But when I walked out, the first phone call that I received was from the minority leader. And what he said is that that is the worst form of betrayal. Okay. Let's talk about that, uh, Mr. Senator. Uh, so there are five members from Jubilee Party. Yes. There's four members from the minority. Yes. Now, uh, we, we have info of what happened that day that... Uh, the, five, um, the four members from the Jubilee Party, four senators, voted for you, plus your own votes. Yes. And then uh, three senators uh, from ODM and uh, one senator from Uranga, Irungu Kangata, voted for Professor Sam Ongeri. Um, and also, we know that uh, you were proposed by Senators Millicent Omanga and Kimani Wamatangi, the senator for, for Kiambu. Yes. A lot of Kenyans finding this quite absurd that you are supported very... Uh, massively by the Jubilee side. I'll demystify that. I served with Senator Melson Omanga, Senator uh, uh, Mithika Linturi, and Senator Wamatangi in the previous committee. They knew how capable I was in trying to analyze the reports from the Auditor General and also some from even the control of budget. We did a very, very good job. In fact, we were able to fast track the adoption of so many reports. And even when those reports were being moved in the House, the chairperson, Senator Kajuang, who did a fantastic job, and myself were the only people who were in the House. Senator Kajuang would move, I would second. So they knew my capability. And in fact, I was actually quite surprised when I was uh, uh, nominated by Senator uh, Milsen Omanga. And I asked her, how come you chose me? She said, because you do a good job. And we worked well together. We did a very, very good job. In fact, if you look at the amount of work that we were able to do in, in, a, in a period of about two and a half years versus the amount of work which was done by the previous parliament, then you will be able to see how good the job we did. So when these uh, three members appointed, uh, 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 nominated me, I believe that they did that because of merit. And also, one of the most important things for Kenyans to understand is that when we form that committee, we are no longer ODM or Jubilee. We are actually a committee of the Senate of the Republic of Kenya, which is stacked with the mandate of ensuring a fiduciary responsibility or fiduciary duty, okay. checking out all the 47 counties. Okay. You're not going to divide and say, you senators from NASA, look at the counties that uh, Jubilee is running, or you senators from Jubilee, take care of, this, of the counties that uh, NASA is running. All so right. really, it is, we are teammates, we are one. We must, for us to be able to move this country far, in the Senate, we have always passed legislations through a bipartisan approach. Okay. Be that as, as it may, Mr. Senator, uh, there are reports that you actually actively reached out to the Jubilee side, as much as you say there are no sides, uh, to, for them to vote for you if you agree to vote for the Kiambu Senator for Vice Chair. Uh, is that a fact? Um, the fact is, I did campaign. Uh, the first person that I reached out to was my colleague 
Senator Kibiro, who I thought was going to be part of the committee. When he was not there, I reached out to Senator Wamatangi. I reached out to Senator Ochila Ayako from uh, NASA. I reached out to Senator Mithika Linturi, Senator Hargura. I reached out to them because I was not looking at them as Jubilee members. I was looking at them as senators, my colleagues, and say, give me an opportunity to be able to serve you as your chair. And in fact, when I did that, one thing which will surprise many Kenyans, which is a fact, I never actually even reached out to Senator Melissa Nomanga. I never asked her to, to nominate me. But because she believed in, the, in merit, that is why I believe she voted for me. And one of the things that really uh, troubles me on this whole issue yes. is the letter which was drafted by Senator um, Orengo. Because when you read the first letter, it says that the, uh, he was disputing the outcome of that election. And that shocked me because when an election is carried out, really, when someone else who was not part of that election coming in to be able to dispute the outcome and he was not party to, uh, to the election, okay. it really, really shocks me. Speaking of which, um, sir, the ODM party, your party, um, seems to be coming from, among other points, what they are trying to say, that there was an agreement two years ago in 2017 um, when uh, the Homer Bay Senator Moses Kajong was elected chair of the CPEC that you agreed as a party or as a minority coalition that Professor Samuel Ngeri was to succeed uh, Kajuang. So the ODM party feels like you have betrayed that. Oh, let me respond to that. Sessional, part, sessional committees in parliament run for one year. In fact, when we were proposing Senator Moses Kajuang to become chair, at that point we thought he was only going to serve as chairperson for one year. But because he did a very good job, we all agreed to allow him to do two more years. So he actually did three years. Now, in 2017, all of us had an interest. I had an interest in becoming chair. Senator Ongeri had an interest in becoming chair. And actually, Senator Kajuang had an interest in becoming chair. But when Senator Kaju, when we thought, this, young, this is a young man, he's energetic. And this is work that requires you to sit for many hours. You know, sometimes we'd even sit for 10, 12 hours. We all agreed to vote for him. Senator Ongeri didn't take it lightly. We actually had a meeting with our party leader. And at that point, we had various different form of discussions. We agreed that each one of us can actually serve one year, one year, one year. Because for four years, each one of us will be able to get a year. But things happen and things change. Senator Kajuang did a very good job. And Ongeri was like, well, continue doing it. So when now we reconstituted the committee, I remember I campaigned heavily for Senator Ongeri to come back All as right. a member. So when he came in, things had already changed. So uh, he didn't insist. What I, what I actually uh, found to be a little bit uh, conniving is that uh, what uh, some people from my party are saying is that we had an agreed, we had agreed to, um, uh, we had a preferred candidate who was going to become chair. We didn't. That is a lie. So there was no agreement. There was for no agreement to, whatsoever. To chairman there was no time. agreement. This is a fact. In fact, Senator Orengo, whom I have a lot of respect for, knows that there was no agreement. We never agreed on one candidate. You know, my colleague, Senator Chilo Ayako, when he stepped uh, down in favor of Hungary, uh, uh, knows very well that he did that under his own volition. You know, some of these things, we cannot sit down for three hours on Zoom, which is right. all recorded. <clears throat> and then after the event, when you actually fight so hard for you to become the chairperson, right. then you are told that uh, you've betrayed the party. Speaking of arrangements or agreements in your party, there was another agreement that you would take over from uh, Cleo Pamalala, the senator for Kakamega, Very true. as deputy minority leader. Yes. And many people in your party feel that you should have you know, waited for that. Let me put it this way. Yes, indeed. There was an agreement that I, should, I would take over from uh, Senator Clefos Malala. That had nothing to do with my membership or me becoming chairperson of CPIC, number one. Number two, when we had an agreement 
with Senator Malala. It was a gentleman's agreement. Things have changed. We have COVID-19. When, when, when Senator Malala came in, he employed seven new members who were employed by the Parliamentary Service Commission. Right now, a lot of Kenyans have been sent home on either unpaid leave or maybe half their salary. I'm a human being. I know Senator Malala and myself can actually be able to survive because we get our salary. Most of our staff, when we send them home, their families depend on them. Okay. Now, it would have meant, let me, let me make this very clear to you, Ben, that if I took over, and, the, and I didn't have any discussion with Senator Malala, but if I took over from May 2nd, it means that the seven employees that he came with, all of them would be rendered jobless. I'm a human being and I care about the welfare of Kenyans. I said to myself, it will not be fair. Those Kenyans whom he employed also deserve to have food on the table. That is the reason why I decided not to pursue that by myself. It is not something which, you know, it was a gentleman's agreement and I just felt like uh, for the sake of those Kenyans who depend on these employees who are employed by the Parliamentary Service Commission, All right. Uh, let me just, you know, let that uh, pass. Okay. Now, I'm looking at uh, Standing Order 190 um, that your minority leader, leader uh, alluded to when he was making that letter to the uh, Senate Speaker. And Part 2 says that uh, the chairperson of the Senate Business Committee shall, upon receipt of the notice under Paragraph 1, that is a notice uh, in writing to the chairperson uh, uh, in committee, that the Senator is to be discharged from the Select Committee, shall forthwith convey the notice to the relevant committee and such notice shall take effect upon receipt by the chairperson or vice chairperson if the discharge relates to the chairperson. So according to the standing order which you are working under currently, um, the, your party which you know, sponsored you to parliament has written for you to be removed. Uh, what next now? Now let me put it this way. First of all, I, re I remember I said in the, uh, in the beginning of this interview, I said that that uh, provision of the standing order is actually something that has not even been used by the majority side for the last eight years. Senator Kindiki never used it. Senator Murkomen has not used it. And also, given the fact that the first letter, which was drafted by Senator Orengo, where he was disputing the outcome of an election, is very clear that the intention is really not to discipline me, but the intention for anything, that, which I have not done, but uh, for any allegation, but the intention was for them to be able to have somebody there who they want to be part. So you cannot really, you know, to, you cannot decide that in an election you must have someone, and if the people do not want, you have to impose that person on to become the chair. So I think in a democratic country, and this is for the future of this nation, and uh, the younger generation who are now, you know, becoming active in, uh, in this country have, have got to pay attention to this. We believe in a democracy. If you go into an election, you win, you have to accept that there is a winner and there is a loser. So when you come and apply such standing order, after you've already written another letter disputing an election, the motive is very clear. It is not for you to be able to... Uh, to, do, to carry out a, a certain function, but it's for you to achieve what you intend to achieve. And in fact, there's a second letter which you have not read. There's a second letter that uh, the minority leader, leader has written. In this letter, the minority leader is arguing that he wants certain things to be changed, whereby the minority party have, got, have more members in the, in the CPIC uh, committee you know, than the majority party. Yes. That, if it, if it happens, it is not applied retrospectively. It has got to apply from 2023. It cannot apply in this parliament. So, so I think it is, it is important for us to be clear. Okay. Because parliament has got its procedures and practices, you know, which has got to be followed throughout. When you amend standing orders, the first thing that he has to do, he has got to get signatures of 15 senators. You know, that is in the standing orders. Get it? go and amend them, but they will not apply for that parliament. They will apply for future parliaments. 
I've seen that letter, uh, and I wanted to ask you that. It's good that you've uh, responded to that. There's another letter from the majority leader, uh, Senator Kipchumba Murkomen, um, almost seeking to respond to that, saying that in the future, committee, such committees should not be a preserve of either minority or majority. But for that to happen, you'd have to change the standing orders. But you cannot stand, uh, change the standing orders when the current session of parliament is ongoing. So. There seems to be some double standards here. You know, I, I don't think it's actually double standard. I think what it is is that this is a discussion that um, the drafters of the standing orders, including the senators, will have to sit down and see the merits and the demerits. But the point is very clear, that you, if you amend the standing orders right now, they will not apply now. You know, they'll apply in a future date. They'll yes. apply for a future parliament. Okay. You know, there's so many things. And in fact, that standing order 190, if you were to ask me in a, in a democratic country like this, it has got to be removed for two reasons. It will stop an individual trying to become a dictator. Because we're in a democracy. We either tell ourselves, either we, if, we are, if we're in a democracy, we say we're in a democracy and we subscribe to the principle of that, of that democracy. But if we are running a country in a way that it is dictatorial, they, those are very, very dangerous things. And we have got to remember that we are only in leadership for a very short time. You know, other people will come. You know, you, so you do unto others what you want done unto you. So don't always apply things to favor you. Ac accept you know, because when it comes to the merits and demerits or the, the, the rights of uh, any senator becoming a chair, you know, you know, it is not preserved for a few. You know, anyone can be. Okay. Are you willing to accept this if the process goes through, you know, to discharge and remove you from these committees? I think for the future of this nation and for democracy, this is a fight that I'm prepared to fight. I'd rather be accused of having failed, but I will never let myself be accused of not having tried. The future generation depend on my leadership now to be able to defend democracy. And that is what I'm prepared to do. Do you think your party leader, Raila Odinga, has a part to play in this? I don't believe so, but I would call upon him to be able to um, have a discussion. I haven't had the time to sit down with the party leader. I believe that he's a Democrat, and I would hope that uh, for him to be able to save the future of this nation, the future of the party, we have BBI coming up, we have a lot of things, we have the handshake, we need to be able to embrace each other, and we need to accept that, uh, you know, the younger generation will never s sit aside, you know, for them to be told, you know, much left or much right. So I think uh, one thing I would call upon uh, the party leader, is to be able to call us. Let us have a conversation. Let us sit down. You know, the chairmanship belongs to Senator Ledamo Lekena. It is a sessional committee. It is one year. If I don't do a good job, in fact, for this year, it is only six months. You know, it is not really uh, for me, to, it is not a must for me to become the chair, but I was elected. Let me serve my term. If at the end of the year, I've not done a good job. All the party feels like someone else should be given an opportunity. So be it. But for now, I won and it is my seat. And one of the things that I tweeted earlier on, and I want to be able to clarify this, is that I know and I have supported my party leader. You know, when he said that his election was stolen, I've supported him and I believe that. Right. Now, I want to call upon my party leader and tell him that my election is being stolen. Support me. Let me not follow suit. Support me for the future of this nation. Speaking of Twitter, um, sir, you also tweeted earlier today that uh, it's a very sh a short tweet. It is about to get nasty. And then later on you tweeted, I understand BBI is coming, like you said, end of this month, Leteni. It seems to some political minds that you're taking on the party. To bring them, bring it on. You're telling them to bring it on. I was elected by uh, the members of the Maasai Nation and other people who live in Narok. And we are not fence-sitters. We are part of this nation. And any discussion which is held has got to take into consideration the interests and the rights of the minorities. 
the future generation depend on a true democratic nation. So it is going to get nasty because we are not going to sit aside and become fence sitters or to rubber stamp on things. What is ours is ours. So what I meant by that is that Kenyans have got to stand up and fight for their rights. You cannot just sit down there. You know, things are different now. You know, we have fought so much for democracy. Senator Rengo, uh, my party leader, um, His Excellency Raila Molo Dinga, have fought so much for freedoms and liberty. So that is the extreme that I'm prepared to fight for, for those freedom and liberty that they have fought for so that the future generation can continue to enjoy them. All right. Um, you also tweeted earlier, uh, a few months ago, uh, when uh, uh, the Bungoma senator, Mazo Zotangula, was being hounded off his position as a minority leader in the Senate, um, for the current minority leader, James Orango, to take over, you told him that uh, a person who owns one cow should not purport to be chairman of uh, cattle deep. Do you think the same is happening to yourself? I know they say karma is a BITCH, but in this case, things are very different. I will tell you, I was elected. When it comes to the former minority leader, it is an opportunity that he's given. Mine is an election. There's no election which is carried out for you to become a minority leader. You are proposed by the coalition or by your party. But in this case, you have to compare apples to apples, but not apples to bananas. All right. There are some who say detractors uh, want to be the devil's advocates that what is happening could be the ma machinations of uh, your political opposition who want to, you know, stoke some trouble inside the, the ODM party. What do you say to that? You know, I, I, I'm not going to speak for them, but I think uh, we are wise enough to know that uh, in this country, we've spoken about the handshake. And the handshake was supposed to bring the Jubilee Party and the NASA coalition into one for the future of this nation. So I will not spend my time really entertaining any thoughts of people who want to come and mess my party or mess any other party. I subscribe to um, the principles and um, the, the uh, what do you call it? the philosophy of my political party, because I believe that, in fact, when you take our constitution and you read it, although sometimes what you read is not what happens, if we are to strictly adhere to that, we'll right. take this country far. And you know, in politics, you are bound to face these challenges. You know, if, if the road was smooth, then we'll not have problems. But you've got to go through this room so that you develop thick, uh, thicker skin so that you'll be able to know how to handle things. And as a leader, for me, I have learned to accept criticism, but when it is right, I fight for the right. Final question, do you still believe your party is a democratic party, and how far are you willing to fight for this? I believe that my party is a democratic party, but of course, in any political environment, there are dictatorial tactics that tend to creep in. Those are the ones that we must crush. So our party is democratic, and that is the reason why I'm not a coward. I will speak the truth. I will fight for democracy, because that is the reason why I'm a leader who has been elected by the people of this country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A Appreciate pleasure it. talking to you tonight. Thank you for your time here on KTN Prime. Ladama Olekina, Senator for the County of Narok and Chairman-elect of the County Public Accounts and Investments Committee. Many thanks for watching KTN Prime. That's why we leave it here on the broadcast. We do appreciate the privilege of your time tonight. For all of us here, thank you for watching our sign language interpreter tonight was Damon Evans.